Hello and welcome to this year's development update video. My name is Dennis from the Flipfields add-on team and in this video I'm going to talk about the add-ons development in the past year. But before I start let me say thank you very much to all customers because you all make it possible for us to keep the development going on. And of course Ryan and me are enjoying working on improvements, bug fixing, creating tutorials and more still like years ago. That's wonderful, thank you all. Okay, so let's talk about the things that happened. Our add-on is now compatible up to Blender 3.2 and we have added support for the new Apple Silicon processor. We also improved the compatibility with older Mac OS versions and the add-on is now compatible with Mac OS Sierra to Monterey. Around 60 bugs has been fixed, most of them were reported by you. And that is very important for us, so thank you and please go on with reporting. While making the add-on as compatible as possible and fixing things, developing a tool also means to improve it and to add new features. So let's talk about these things now. If you are driving into an issue, or let's say you find a bug. It is helpful for us to have some information about the system you are using and to make it comfortable for you. There is now a copy system info to clipboard operator in the preferences menu. While being in Blender, click Edit, Preferences, search the Flip Fluids add-on, open the panel and scroll down to the copy system info button. Click it and your system information are in the clipboard. You could now write a new email to us. The address is support at flipfluids.com and paste the info text there. A blend file and a description of the problem will be great too. Okay, let's jump back to the preferences window because there are other things that are very interesting. An example, there's this command line tools window with a relaunch bake field. When you use the command line bake button and baking aborts for some reason, the add-on will automatically try to restart baking and will do it as often as you have it typed in here. And when talking about automation, an automatic start to render after baking is also available now. A time saver when baking longer than you can sit in front of your system. What this does is, it looks if baking has been finished and then hits the Generate and Execute CMD Render button. But please notice that this is only working with CMD based baking, not with the regular baking button. CMD operators are excellent for baking and rendering without crisp or let's say with less crisp. That's why we also have applied a single frame render button. This one renders the actual frame on the command line base and then opens the rendered image with your default image viewer application. This means a single frame has been rendered and saved to your output folder and that is important to know because when you are going to generate a batch file, our add-on looks for already rendered images and skips them in batch rendering. Bad if you have changed anything in your scene after clicking that single frame render button. So please check this always. There's another small improvement and that is a better cache naming workflow. Take a look to the 3D viewport. And on the right side, in the helper panel, and also in the add-ons main panel, there are these little buttons. Clicking the folder means to open the cache folder. Helpful if you would like to add a log file for your support request email. The minus and plus button are there to absolutely quickly create a new cache folder. Helpful if you need to bake the same scene but with different simulation settings. And if you have saved your scene into another blend file with another blend file name, you can click on match file name to have a matching cache folder name. With Blender 3.1, there's a big thing you need to know. Geometry notes. These nodes are magic and they make new things possible. Things like, yes, motion blur. When you open the geometry node tool panel, you will find the initialize motion blur button. 
And when clicking this, in general, two things are happening. The first thing is, the add-on creates a working geometry node setup for you. Yeah, you don't need to do that yourself. It does it for the fluid surface as well as for white water particles. And while one of these is selected, you will find a scale feed in the modifier tab. With this, you have a full control of the blur strength. And the second thing that is happening when clicking the initialize button is, the add-on activates the velocity attribute. But what the hell is an attribute? That's the next new feature, and I'm sure you will love it. But before I show you attributes, I will let you know two other fantastic things that happened. One thing is called point clouds. Point clouds can be used to render all white or particles. The foam, the spray, bubbles, dusts, all of them much, much faster using a lot less memory. You could simulate and render more white water than before. And the new point cloud object type makes it possible to vary particle size, vary color and to add other attributes to white water. The second fantastic thing is an improvement with surface tension. You can choose now to use a regular surface tension, what looks like this. Or to select the new smooth option, what looks like this. But please notice that use smooth does only make sense in scenes like this. On bigger scenes, yeah, it's more fluid and more fluid motion, the smooth option can result in bad looking fluid surfaces. I mean, holes as an example. There we recommend to use the regular surface tension option. Okay, and now let's go on with talking about attributes. Attributes are, let's say, invisible markers that are connected to fluid particles. A fluid particle can carry some information that way, information like color, speed, age and more. To make attributes visible, it is required to enable the developer tools in the preferences. Let's watch this. Down in the experimental and debug tools field is a checkbox. Attributes are still in development, so this is not enabled by default. But if you are using an experimental build of our add-on, it still is. Available attributes can be found in the Flip Fluid Surface panel. They are located here because they work on the simulated fluid surface. Important hint: surface means not volume. What I'm telling you here does only work on the fluid surface and not inside of your fluid. And you need to activate one or multiple attributes before you start baking because only that way fluid particles can carry the requested information. And after baking, all the magic happens with geometry and shader nodes. What you need to know also is that attributes only work on your final mesh. If you are using the preview mesh in the viewport, you will find out that attributes are not working. Please note this. And motion blur will only be visible in a rendered image, not in viewport rendering. Also something you could note. Of course, we have rendered examples of all attributes for you here. Enjoy watching! The first one is the age attribute, where you can control the color over the age of fluid particles. Then there's the color attribute. It works by giving each fluid object in your scene a separate color and use this information the fluid surface shader node setup. We have the source ID attribute, what works by giving all your fluid objects an ID. And these IDs can be brought together in the shader node setup. The difference between the color attribute and the source ID attribute is that color means to only have different colors for one shader, while source ID can be used to have multiple shaders for your fluid surface. But with a trick, you can use the color attribute for some as well. For this, you would decide to only use three different colors for your fluid object. Pure red, green and blue. And then split them with an RGB split node in the shader setup. This way, you can have three different shaders using the color attribute. There's a speed and a velocity attribute. The same here. 
connect the attributes in your shader node setup to get different creative effects. Velocity, by the way, can be used to generate motion blur in a geometry node setup. You see, many things are possible. And you can make vorticity visible using the vorticity attribute. Well, with our new FlipFruits add-on version 1.4.0, the attributes feature has been improved. There's now smoothing possible for the age and the color attributes. And for the color attributes, there's now a brand new mixing function. And let me show you what these things are doing. As said, this still is in development and we will improve all attributes in the future. There are some more attributes for white water particles and that means you have to open the flip fluid white water panel and scroll down to the geometry attribute field. The same here, activate the attributes you would like to use before baking and after baking a working geometry node setup is required. And yes. Here are some more examples. The lifetime attribute makes it possible to colorize particles over the lifetime, as example. And the velocity attribute does colorize particles depending on their velocity. The same here, in a geometry node setup you can use velocity attributes to generate motion blur. Let me tell you that some attributes are faster in calculation than others. And of course some attributes will need more disk space than others. How much disk space an attribute requires will be visible in the stats panel. You know, the one on the bottom of the add-on. And maybe you will drive into Blender Crests while rendering an animation with attributes. Unfortunately, this is a Blender internal bug, so till this is fixed by Blender developers, we recommend to use our command line Blender tools. Well, to have a good start into attribute geometry node setups, we have some Blend files for you. They are available for all customers in your market account, and they are development too. Ah yes, market account, a good point. Because our add-on is now available on three marketplaces. Blend the market, we are now on Flippin' Normals and we are on Gumroad. And all of them have a few sales every year for a limited time. So if you would like to make sure that you don't miss it, this is the right time to subscribe all our channels. You know, YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter and so on. And that makes also sense, because this way you will take notice about other videos and actions. Like tutorials or like our customer reel. Yeah, did you see the last reel? The customer reel 2021 was amazing. There were so many great animations made by absolutely great artists. You must watch it. And if you are interested in being part of the next reel, the submissions phase for the customer reel 2022 just has started. We have decided to make this year's reel a bit more special because our add-on comes with a feature called Force Fields. A feature that will give you the power to deform gravity inside of Blender, of course. Do you know Force Fields? If not, here comes another pro point for channel subscription. We published a full Force Fields tutorial a few weeks ago. Please watch it. And then send us your most creative force field videos for the customer reel 2022. All information about the reel can be found on our webpage. Well, this was all for the past year. A lot of work and a lot of fun for us, but as you know, we love what we are doing here and we will do it as long as possible. Over the last year, we have begun work on another add-on development project related to simulation in Blender. 
We are designing and developing a new simulation engine to expand the simulation and visual effects capabilities of Blender. A large part of this development will benefit and improve the flip fluids add-on. It's still too early to release more details on this project right now, but we are excited to share more information with you in the future, when we are ready. <laughs> Don't miss it and subscribe our channel. Okay, I have finished. Thank you very much for watching this video and goodbye.